good morning everyone and welcome back to my channel english literature today we are going to read ode to nightingale by john keats stanza 2 in the stanza 1 we have found that how overwhelmed the poet is after listening to the song of nightingale and in the first stanza keats described the beauty of nature and the melodious voice of the nightingale and being a romantic poet he is perfectly in his work now in the second stanza the poet longs to take a draught of rare old wine in order to escape to the world of the forest so this stanza you will find escapism that is lying in the heart of every romantic poet escape in the world of nature living this mundane world of human activities so in this poem, stanza the poet longs to escape in the world of the forest where the bard decides and with the help of not lethe lethe is not for the poet so here is part of lethe he want to take a draft of wine but there are some condition of the wine that wine is special and we will read about it how what is the specialty about this wine now draft this word draft means a mouthful of wine a mouthful of wine a drink you can call it a drink not in the sense of verb vintage vintage means old wine especially of good quality old wine especially of good quality cooled a long ago cooled a long ago in the deep delved earth so the one must be cooled a long age long age means long ago deep dell means dug deeply which is the wine which is buried for a long time buried for a long time i have no such experience but uh, those who are experiencing this can feel that the old wine or that is a vintage wine or that a wine that is wait for a long time can be more tasty than the general one so the wine must be deep delved art which is varied for a long time and there must be tasting of flora and the country in tasting of wine will remind the poet the greenness flora again um, from greek mythology allusion from flora is the roman it is from rome mythology roman goddesses of flower now this tasting of flora means that after tasting the wine the poet will be reminded about the country green about the green uh, scene of festivities of the greenness of country these things will be reminded through this tasting of wine wine will find greenness while tasting wine <coughs> dance and provencal song now provence is a part of france provencal song is actually main regional song or folk song regional song or folk song now provence is a southern district of france a southern district of France along the Mediterranean 
and it is uh, this place is famous or noted for its wine this place is famous for its wine and for its poetry french poetry originated in this place and flourished so provence is the southern part uh, sorry a southern district of france along the mediterranean and it is noted for its wine and for its being the birthplace of French poetry. Now here Provencal song refers to the song of love, chivalry and all these that is we call uh, in general term as that regional song. Now the Nightingale song reminds the poet about this Provencal song. dance, Provencal song and again sunburnt mirth. So what is meant by sunburnt mirth? Mirth means enjoyment and that enjoyment that is happened in some sunny atmosphere, maybe the southern part of Europe that is called sunburnt mirth. So sunburnt mirth refers to the mirth. <laughs> of people exposed more to the sun as a result of their participation in open air sports or dances we already get the term dance song so maybe they are participating in some merrymaking that is the open air that is under the sun being the skin being exposed to the sun and that is called sunburn month <laughs> they're enjoying in some sunny atmosphere so when the poet is going to taste the wine, actually Nightingale song makes the poet very eager, he, uh, he just get, he gets a longing in his heart for the ideal world. But he cannot cross the river of forgetfulness like the dead man. So he takes the other way, that is the other way is tasting of, tasting of wine. He cannot go through that part of Nightingale. He cannot go to that kingdom, you can say kingdom of Nightingale. He cannot go to that kingdom of Nightingale, crossing the river Lithi. So he can take the help of wine and go there. But what type of wine? He just gave a long list that wine must be vintage, that must be dipped and a long egg in the deep delve art that is cold and there must be tasting of flora, country green, there must be dance, provincial songs, sunburnment, all these things will remind him. All these will be gotten by the poet when he will taste the wine. So when he will taste that wine, will taste that wine, the poet will be reminded by these things. So that wine must be in touch, must be endowed with these things. Oh, for a beaker full of warm south. So warm south again we get sunburn month again we get warm south we get provincial song so this warmness is permeating through this stanza this desire for warmness warm south means wine prepared from graphs grown in the sunny 
southern part of Europe. Wine prepared from the grapes grown in the sunny southern part of Europe. Okay. Full of true the blast full hypocrisy. Blastful hypocrisy. So what is blastful hypocrisy? Okay, beaker. Beaker, you know, uh, everyone of us know it is a type of goblet with a white mouth. Goblet with a white mouth. So he wants not a uh, sip, but he wants a beaker full of worms out. Full of true, the blastful hypocrite. Now, <coughs> sorry, what is that hypocrite? Hypocrite is, I have got too much cold. The weather is, uh, now it is winter and the weather is very cold here. There is no warm, there is no sunburn month. Most of the time, the atmosphere is hazy, gloomy, no such uh, sunshine so I got cold full, uh, from my voice you can understand <laughs> full of the true and sorry uh, I regret for that inc inconvenience on your part full of the true true means genuine real blastful blastful means oh, when we blast when you just feel sigh we blast here blastful means glowing red in color <coughs> glowing in red color so the wine must be red and again hypocrine takes us to Greek mythology hypocrine is a fountain it is said that it is made by the stroke of the hoop of the winged horse Picassus okay I mean, writing this a fountain according to greek mythology it is a fountain made by the stroke of the hook of the winged horse pigasus we all know pigasus the winged horse you can find the image if you google okay it uh, gives the inspiration to create this fountain gives uh, the inspiration to create something and this fountain is on mount helicon this fountain is on mount helicon and it is sacred helicon okay it is sacred to the muses you know who are who are muses muses are the goddesses in Greek mythology who are for different arts so wine is that just like an inspiration of creation the poet cannot create so the poet wants the inspiration from that wine the po wine will be enable him to create something great out of the song of the nightingale so it is said that uh, the muses who um, that fountain that fountain water is like that wine if the poet can take a drop of that vintage he can be just uh, he can be able to produce poetry he can be able to produce something great something real the fountain has supposed to have had the power to inspire those who drank from it. So the, in the same way, kids think that of wine that has the inspiring water of Mount Helicon, of that hypocrite, that fountain hypocrite. And that inspiring wine can enable him to create something divine. Okay. Now, with beaded bubbles winking at the brim, 
with beaded bubbles winking at the brim. brim. Beaded means round drops of bubble that usually fill up the surface of the cup. When you pour, when you pour wine in a beaker or here you will find you will find beaded bubbles. So it is a round drop, round drops of bubble, round drops of bubble that is fill up, that is fill up the surface of the glass or beaker when one pours wine into it and that bubbles are like bead you know bead we used for making garland necklace this type of bead so this type of beaded bubbles will find when someone pours wine into a beaker winking they are winking so you can find how just visuality this line is too much visual you can feel that you are pouring wine in a glass in a just transparent glass and then the beaded bubbles are winking at you winking at the brim and purple stained mouth purple the mouth will get purple stained why after drinking after to again this line is also visual this purple your mouth will be get purple after you drink the wine that i might drink and leave the world unseen so this is the ultimate desire of the poet of all the romantic poet desire of all the romantic poets He want to drink and leave the world unseen. He want to go to the world of Nightingale taking the help of wine. And with the fade away into the forest dim. He want to fade away in the forest dim. Means dim forest. Forest dim refers to dim forest. Shadowy, where the nightingale is hidden, that's why he was called Dard, light orange Dard of the trees. So, shadowy grove, which does not allow much light, that is, that's why it is dim on account of thick clusters of leaves. So the nightingale is hidden here in this shadowy grim, in this dim forest, in this dim part of the forest. And the poet wish to go there, the poet wish to go that shadowy dim. The poet craves into the, for that world. Okay. So, ultimately, in the first angle, we find that the poet described the song of the nightingale, the place of the nightingale, and how that song affects him. And now, in this stage two, he expresses his desire to go to that world and to the help of wine. Actually, the poet is keenly aware of the contrast of the bird's world, bird's happy lot and his own miserable condition as a human being. So he longs to share the birds a lot. And he thinks that wine might wine can help him. Perhaps wine may help him. He craves for it, believing that with itself he may escape this awful world and identify himself with a happy bird, with a happy lot of the bird. So he thinks of the flora or the goddesses of flower and the village green 
uh, and the young people dancing under the sun making merriment song of provence so all these beautiful invigorating things he will experience through the uh, sipping not sipping <laughs> through that wine and in the next stanza we will get another theme so this stanza's theme is the poet's desire to go to nightingale's world number 1 and number 2 is how he wish to go there to the help of wine and the next stanza stanza 3 he will describe why he wants to go why he wants to leave this world what are the problem in this mundane world okay so in the next stanza we will read about that and adieu for now Thank you for staying with me. Have a good day.